Greetings everyone and welcome back to another phone review. In today's one we're taking a look at a very basic but fairly interesting phone. This is the Xiaomi Quinn 2. A phone that I purchased on eBay for only $65 Australian. That's with free shipping as well. I will display the currency conversion chart on screen for you all so you get an idea of how much this phone cost me. There is a downside to this phone being so cheap for me anyways. Is that the global version which comes with all Google Play services was out of stock and was selling at the time for about $100 Australian. So the seller offered me the China version for the $65 Australian and I said it'd be fine. In hindsight though, I probably should have went with the global version since there isn't any Google Play services on it, but I'm sure we will manage. It's actually very difficult to find the Xiaomi Quinn 2 in stock at the moment. If you do, it's actually a bit more pricier than when I was looking around for this phone on eBay. But the phone comes in a few different configurations. The Xiaomi Quinn AI Life, which is the one I have, is basically made for the Chinese market with no Google services. The Xiaomi Quinn 2, which is pretty much the same thing, but this is what would be the global version with Google services. I found a listing on Banggood Spain for one that comes in at about 127 US dollars. Finally, the Xiaomi Quinn 2 Pro, which has two gigabytes of RAM instead of one gigabyte on the base models, and the internal storage also gets a bump to 64 gig rather than the 32 gig on the base models. And that is also available on Banggood Australia, but that comes in at $243 Australian, which that's honestly a bit much for a phone like this. The seller I got my phone from had the global version up for $92 Australian, but they have been taken down, and from what I can gather, it was because of the whole global China version mix-up thing. I will put the link down in the description below for the one I purchased off eBay, just for reference. Anyways, the Xiaomi Quinn 2 is made to be more of a companion to your main phone than it is a dedicated mobile phone itself, but you can still do mostly everything you can do on your main phone. It's just that this is a more compact one and doesn't really have the best specifications, which for a budget phone, it's not too bad. If you do go with the one I have, you can only install six extra applications on top of what's already installed. This also goes for the Quinn 2 Global. If you go with the Pro version, you can install up to an additional 12 applications, so I will test installing APKs on this phone and see if that limit pops up. Now it's time to go over the specifications of the phone, which we've got the basic information with the RAM and storage. We are running Android 9 Go Edition, supports for 2G, 3G and 4G networks with all the bands listed on screen. If you do plan on buying this phone, make sure that these bands are compatible with your country. 576 by 1440 display, support for a single nano SIM card, a 2100mAh battery, 5 megapixel main camera with autofocus, Type-C USB port, which also supports on the go, VOLTE. Now in this spec sheet, it does say Google and Play Store. However, these aren't included with my model. The dimensions are also listed and it's only 105 grams, which is a very light device. And the package contents is the phone, SIM eject tool, Type-C cable, and a bonus protective case. Something you also didn't see during that spec sheet is that the phone actually packs dual stereo speakers, which is a feature you really don't see phones on less than $100, that's for sure. But unfortunately, there is no headphone jack, but at least they've implemented the dual speakers. So with a fairly good idea of the specifications, let's quickly go through the listing of the Quinn 2 and see what this compact phone has to offer. The first picture in the listing is just a quick brief of the specifications of this phone, including the two edition one key to switch. So the power button actually has a bit of a split in it and it's used to open the assistant on the phone, which I will show you later on. Next few pictures just show the phone with its full screen display and take note, there's no front camera. New operating interface, easy to operate, showing Android 9, but with all the Google Play services, which mine does not have. Smooth line designed for a comfortable grip with a 5.05 inch full screen, 8.6 millimeter slim body, 22.5 by nine aspect ratio, fit the palm of the hand, easy to hold with one hand. So this phone is made for one hand operation. Infrared remote control, one piece of control. So this does have an infrared blaster at the top of the device. So you can control various appliances, right stroke to open the shortcut bar, stay on the last look at the application, return to the previous level on both sides, pretty much just about the navigation gesture as well as the user interface, which we will check out. Based on Android 9.0, the system on chip model is the Sprotrum SC9832E, a processor platform owned by G. Wang Group, sorry I don't know how to pronounce that, with a quad-core CPU featuring low power consumption and high performance, independent AI key, one-click access, convenient and fast, and as you can see, that's the split power button, which I'll get to soon. Type-C interface, which is compatible with USB earphones. Because there is no headphone jack on this phone, you will have to connect either a dongle to this or use Type-C earphones. The packing list shows everything we get in the box, and that's all the listing. It's fairly basic, pretty much gives you all of the information that we need to know about the Quinn 2 or the Quinn AI Live. So let's go ahead and unbox this compact phone and see if it's worth the 65 bucks. Taking 14 days to get from one state of Australia to the next, we have a parcel. Let's open it up and take a look at the Quinn 2 and see what this budget Xiaomi device is capable of. Uh, 
And this is it, the Quinn 2 in a tiny little box. Got a couple of stickers on the back here, but we'll take the plastic off and see the information underneath. But I did get the red version. We do have some information saying the Quinn 2 was made in 2019. Well, there you go. I thought it was a bit newer than that. And on the back, it says Quinn 2, VOLTA, 4G, 2G, 4G, 3G, and the rest of it is all in Chinese. But the seller did tell me that there is English apps on here. Taking the top of the box off, though, there it is. What a strange phone. Only 100 grams. But there you go. The Xiaomi Quinn 2. And inside the box, you just get a USB cable, a case, and then you get the instruction manual and a SIM eject tool as well. Remember, this is a budget phone, so they're not going to include too much, but an included case is more than enough. And unfortunately, yeah, this is all in Chinese, which the seller did say uh, that that was going to be the case, but that's all right, though. I do love a good red and black USB cable, that's for sure. Everything here is also in Chinese, so we're just going to ignore that for now. But is there a pre-applied screen protector? There is a pre-applied screen protector, which is nice. No front camera, no nothing. There is a bit of a chin on this display, but most of this is just all screen. At the top, we have our sensor area as well as our earpiece, which doubles as the second speaker. On the side, we've got a volume rocker as well as this split sort of power button. Now, I believe that's the AI button, and then this is the actual power button itself. On the bottom, Type-C USB port, no headphone jack, and we've just got the two spec grills with one occupied. The other side, we've just got our SIM card tray, and at the top, we've got our IR blaster. On the back, we've got the single 5 megapixel camera, as well as an LED flash. Some more information just there. And we've got the Quinn logo, Quinn AI Life, and that's pretty much it. But I love this red color, straight away. And the build of this is just a plastic body and glass front. Taking the SIM card tray out, we only have support for one nano SIM, that's it. So no micro SD card support on here, just nano sim that's it you do get 32 gigabytes of internal storage so it's not all that bad finally the included case just sort of slips on something like that there you go oh it's not really that nice now but still protective case more than enough it's kind of looking pink now with my vodafone sim loaded into the quinn 2 let's go ahead and power him on oh it's dead well that sucks this is the first time out of all the videos that I've done on my YouTube channel, out of all the videos where I've powered on a phone, they've always powered on. This is the first one that hasn't powered on. Well, I guess we've got to give it life then. It is now charging. There's actually a notification LED at the top of this, which is really cool to see. All right, there we go. Take two of powering on the Quinn 2. There we go. It is an IPS LCD on here. And this should be... Uh, 1440 by 540, I believe. But it's such a weird aspect ratio, though. It's just... It's strange. You just don't see this too often. It makes one-handed use very easy, though, I can tell you that. There we go. We've booted up. And it's in Chinese, unfortunately. There we go. Okay. Oh, navigation gestures. No. We're going to have to jump into settings, because I'm going to have to change the language. That was easy. All right, cool. Now that it's in English and all ready to go, we've got WeChat, Me AI, Me Home, Duo Quinn Translator, Remote, Shimalaya, Shimalaya. I'm not too sure. Smart as a notes, Alipay, Me Calculator, Music Clock and Calendar. So very, very basic. And swiping along, we've got Common, which is just a couple of things there. We've been over tools, phone messaging, contacts, camera, gallery, weather, sync files, and something there that I'm not too sure what that is. Others, we've got settings, browser, sound, and iFly. So there's no Google Play services on here. QQ Music, something, AMAP, voice note, SIM. And that's pretty much it. So if we go into settings itself, but network and internet, Wi-Fi, mobile data, data usage, hotspot and tethering, SIM cards, mobile plan, airplay mode, VPN, and private DNS. Connected devices, just Bluetooth, apps and notifications. We've got the system files just here, which I'll just quickly browse through. I don't think there's gonna be anything dodgy on this. It's a Xiaomi device. Well, Xiaomi in name only, really. Well, no, it's actually, no, it's Xiaomi. It's fine, it is Xiaomi. Um, so, yeah, it's got a couple of things there, but no Google services or anything like that on here. I've just looked up as well to see if you can actually put Google services on here. And you can, but it seems to be a bit complicated. Battery, we've got 8%. I will do a standby test and a charging test, and I'll splice that in here. 
I've had time to do the standby test as well as the charging test and it was on 100% and I left it for about two and a half days and it dropped to about 54% and that was with my SIM at 4G and Wi-Fi on. So for a compact little phone, that's not too bad. It took around 50 minutes or so to get it back to 100%. And also a side note, this phone does not have any fast charging capabilities. So the battery on this, as well as the charging test, has gone quite well. In display, we've got all the normal options, but we've got wallpaper. Oh, we've got black, red, more red, pink, and blue. I'm gonna choose that red. That red's nice. And just taking a closer look at the display, you can see just how clear it is. This 1440 by 576 display is absolutely clear as crystal. I mean, it's not perfect, but for a screen this size, it looks really vibrant and the colors really do pop out. Scheduled power on and off, virtual buttons and full screen, which is the gestures as well as the buttons. Now I can go to the full screen gestures as I kind of said no to earlier, which kind of does a little something like that. Uh, but I will go back to using the buttons. Also double click waken. I guess we'll just have that on because we can now double click to wake. And you can configure the virtual buttons with a number of different combinations there. And that opens the notification panel. Remote locating, bind, unbind, terms of service. So if you lose this phone, you can use some sort of remote location to find it. That's pretty cool. Sounds, all the volume sliders, phone ringtones, fluty phone. Advanced is just other sounds and vibrations. The vibration motor is not too bad in this. It's not very high powered, but it will do. Security and lock screen. Well, there's no fingerprint scanner, no nothing. So you're just stuck with pin, pattern, or swipe. In accounts, just says that. So unfortunately, can't add an account on here. In accessibility, all the stuff you need to see in here. I'll leave it all as is. And finally, in system, we've got about this AI assistant, where it does say the RAM is one gig, Android version is nine. There we go. Even though it's got the one gigabyte of RAM and the fairly low end processor, it's quite snappy, I must say. So far, it's quite snappy. So I'm going to go into network and internet, connect to Wi-Fi, only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, no 5 gigahertz, but that's all right. Standard Gboard as well, so that's fine. Typing on it though is a little strange because it's only that big. You can configure it in settings, but it's just going to be more of a one-handed device more than two-handed. So you're going to be sort of messaging with just one hand there. System updates did come up with something. So yep, there you go. Download and install. So we do have a system update. It's only 64 meg, but better than nothing. Unfortunately, we can't do the system update yet because we've got less than 30% battery life. Now, it has been a while since I got that initial system update. I've now updated to version 1.2.9. The release notes do show that we've got something changed, but I've had three total updates in the week and a half or so that I've had this phone. But if someone wants to translate that and let me know what that says, feel free. But what I'm going to do is give this phone a call and see how the call quality is like on this. We know the default ringtone is flutey phone. There it is. Microphone and earpiece are quite good. So I'll splice in the audio test here. This is the earpiece quality of the Xiaomi Quinn 2. This is with Vodafone at 4G. I believe it's still running at 4G, but I can check. And this is the microphone quality of the Xiaomi Quinn 2. If you do hear any interference, it's because I'm recording this with my Blue Yeti microphone. So there may be a little bit of buzzing and all that sort of stuff that you can hear. The earpiece is nice and clear and the microphone is also quite clear. So for a budget device, it's doing all the right things. And in regards to the user interface, as I've already shown, you sort of swipe along choose a folder, go back to that as it is, or you can swipe down like so. In the notification shade, we just have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, sound, torch, mobile data, switch data card, which you can't use on this because there's only one SIM card slot, but anyways, airplane mode and screenshot. The torch on this looks a little something like that. It's actually really bright. It almost looks like there's actually two LEDs built into there. So when we tear this down, we'll have a look at that. But you can create another folder if you want to and then add applications into there. So I want to show you the side button. So just pressing it will lock the phone. Pressing it will open the phone. If you press and hold it at the bottom, it opens up the assistant, which is all in Chinese. But if we go ahead and accept it, it'll bring up this menu where I'm not too sure what it says. Now, if you go ahead and press and hold the top of the button, it will show the power options. So it is quite handy to have this button, but this key is only assigned to the built-in assistant. It cannot be reassigned to anything else. So now I guess we can briefly go through some of the applications that are included on this device. WeChat, unfortunately, I don't have an account for that, so I can't log into that, but it's there. Uh, Me AI, I guess we just agree, and it's all in Chinese. The main thing with this phone is that you can control other Xiaomi devices with this. Me Home is probably going to be exactly the same thing. Oh no, this one's okay. 
There we go. So this one's probably the better one to use because this one's in English. So you can add devices in here and control them. Like if you've got a Xiaomi vacuum cleaner or some other Xiaomi smart product, you can add it into here. And you can also sign in with a Mi account on this phone as well. Duo Quinn is probably, oh, okay. It's a um, translator. So I can do English to Chinese. Oh, you've got to register an account. But that's a good thing though, especially if you travel, you can use this to translate speech on the go, which is kind of nice. Remote is gonna control devices that use infrared because we've got the infrared blaster at the top. Now, originally when I opened the remote application on this phone, I couldn't add any devices. It just refused to do anything. However, I did get my LG DVD and VHS combo to register on here and it does all work, no problem. So the infrared blaster does work. You can use this as a remote. And I'm pretty sure one of the system updates may have fixed this because it was the initial firmware that was on this phone where I was experiencing some issues. And I've got all the controls there, testing them all and everything's all good. Anyways, we've got Shimalaya, I guess. I'm not too sure what this is, sorry. Oh, would this be like a, uh, a Play Store, I'd say? No, it's a music store. There you go, it's a music store. So you can play a whole bunch of Chinese music on here and you can snatch red packets. I believe that's the snatch red packets button. You've got to register and stuff. Okay, well, that's interesting to see. Smartazan? Smart as Zen is, oh, it's just a notes, okay. Alipay, which I'm gonna need an account for. The Xiaomi calculator, is a calculator. Music, we'll come back to. Clock, looks like a clock. Calendar, looks like a calendar. Phone messages, contacts, camera, we'll come back to in a second. Gallery, weather, it should detect where I am, that's fine. Uh, sync is just the sync assistant. Files is our file manager for our 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which I'll put the APKs on here and we'll test and see if we can install them. And then we've got this, which I'm not too sure what this is. I could point my phone at it and do a translate, but it's a circle with a lightning bolt. I'm not too sure what this is. It's gonna need me to sign in anyways. In others, we've got settings, browser, sound, and iFly. So we'll go into the browser and we will type in Google. I should be using one hand actually. That's what it's made for. But there we go, Google's there. And in the browser, I've just typed in Quintu AI Life. And yeah, it's fairly snappy to be fairly honest. The Banggood listing for the Quintu Pro is on Banggood Australia. And as I said at the start of the video, it is what, 200, yeah, $243 Australian, but that does have two gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage in this form factor, which look, it's completely up to you if that's what you want to go with, but this is the global version. But honestly, at that price point, I think that's just a little bit too much. But honestly, the keyboard in the browser and using the keyboard in general is going to be absolutely no problems with just one-handed usage. You can use two hands if you want to, but honestly, one-handed usage is a lot easier and if you wanted to install another keyboard, you can, but just remember you are only limited to six applications you can install on this phone. But the included browser is fine for everyday usage. And if you want to just quickly check the internet, it's all good. But Baidu is the default search engine for the browser. So if you can get Chrome on here, then that'll be all good. But otherwise, if you don't mind just going into the browser, going into Google, then you can just use Google from there if you want to. Sound recorder is going to just be a sound recorder, all the usual stuff. iFly is gonna want me to sign in, I think. Oh no, it's just asking to change the keyboard. That's right, iFly's a keyboard. Installed, we've got QQ Music, which probably wants me to sign in once again. No, but I won't be able to use it because it's all in Chinese anyways. This application, which I'm not too sure what this is. News, okay, Chinese news, we don't wanna hear that. AMAP is gonna just be maps. If we just choose a car and we should be able to navigate, I would say. But unfortunately, with it all being in Chinese, there's not a lot you can do. I don't think you can install Google Maps on here, but I don't think you'd want to use this phone for GPS. I mean, you can, it's completely up to you, but it's just a matter of finding an application that's actually going to work and is in English as well. Or if you understand Chinese, then that's absolutely no problem. Voice note, which you can just take a voice note, I suppose. I think what we've really got to do is install APK files to truly test this phone out anyways. But as it is, just out of the box, if you need to make phone calls, it'll be fine. If you need to go on the internet quickly, it'll be fine. And to think that this has better specs than most of the welcome devices I have a look at on this channel. Now, in terms of APK files, since I'm filming this video all over the place, I actually have installed a bunch of APKs already. So I've installed San Andreas, Crazy Taxi, Device Info Hardware, Opera, Secret Codes, and the CPU System Info application. But if we go to Tools and go to Files, if you notice I had six applications installed, if I now try to install Antutu, the message comes up with 
exceed limitation. Installed app count has exceeded limitation. So as I said, you're only limited to six applications. For a budget phone, six is enough. And in terms of Google Play services, I've tried multiple things to try and get it installed. And unfortunately, as I said, it is very complicated. You have to unlock the bootloader of the phone, flash a new recovery on it, get a new ROM on here. So you can't just download Google Chrome and get that working because that requires Google Play services. There's just a lot of things going on. So without the Google Play services, you're kind of stuck in a few places. But I'll open Opera just to have a look at the browser and just see how this runs. But the default browser was fairly snappy, but I'll just test this quickly. You can go straight to Google. We can also type in Quinn 2 AI Life, which I failed at spelling. If we go into AliExpress, is it on here though? Here it is from $93 Australian to $160 Australian. And unfortunately, the Quinn 2 is actually out of stock in this listing. As I said, it's actually quite difficult to find this phone in stock. And just using Opera just for a little bit, it honestly feels a lot more snappier than the default browser. So instead of Google Chrome, I'd probably recommend to just stick Opera on here. It's quite snappy for what it is. But let's go into camera and test out the camera on this. So slide right, there we go. So we do have the five megapixel back camera, no EIS or anything like that, but we've got super fine quality. So you can do a couple of different modes here. You've got manual burst, panorama, audio note, filter, QR code, and night shot. So we can try night shots on this. HDR is also available. And in video settings, we can record in 1080p, which is good and there's no EIS or anything like that, all fairly basic. So what I'm going to do is do the camera test with this Quinn 2, have a look at the photos and videos, come back, start installing some APKs to try and see if we can get this phone to a normal usable state, and continue on with this review. Testing video recording on the Quinn 2. This should be in 1080p. We don't have autofocus by the looks of it in video mode, but in camera mode it's all good. Oh no, actually no, we do have autofocus. It's all good. Just having a look at the flowers. It's actually fairly stabilized as well, even though there's no option for it. It's not too bad. Three Muppets, as per usual. Also, did anyone realize he has a mushroom for a leg? Brick wall pan, looks a little something like that. You can see all the details and stuff. Hey, for a budget phone, this is actually not too bad. I can't really see the quality as of yet, but when I take a look at it on my computer, then I'll be the judge of it. But for now, it actually looks pretty good. Better than most welcome devices? Most likely. The faraway aircon looks a little something like this with a two times digital zoom. And that's it. That's all we have. Oh, this is night mode. So video mode in night mode. Oh, careful there. You almost slipped and fell. You'll be okay. Okay, so you've just seen the photos and videos that I took with the Quinn 2. Some shots did have HDR on, some didn't. The colors aren't too vibrant, but for a five megapixel camera on a fairly budget phone like this, Honestly, it's not too bad. Night mode, on the other hand, looked a little something like that. You can barely see anything. And also using the LED flash to try and brighten up the area didn't really work that well. I kind of had to point it directly at the frogs to get some sort of image on screen. And that's kind of looking a little black and white, but that's okay. And this is all just with the stock camera app. But if you installed a third party camera application, you could possibly push more out of the camera. But this isn't really meant to be a phone for photography and all that sort of thing. So that five megapixel camera is gonna do everything you need it to do. Now I've already taken up the space for the six applications on the phone. So I need to get rid of one because I wanna install YouTube Advanced. So I've installed the secret codes app just to see if anything does pop up. And sure enough, we actually have a couple of options. You can actually put the code 007 in to open something. Let's try it. 
Well, there you go. That worked. And this is engineer mode. So we can choose the network mode. Well, there you go. That's quite interesting to see. And there was actually a couple of options in there that I could have played around with. Now, I was actually trying to install YouTube Advanced on here, but that wanted to install another application on top of the manager, and that failed due to already having too many apps installed. So we'll go through Opera and we'll try the YouTube test. And with the Costa Rica video in 720p, let's give this a go and see how it performs. Oh yeah, the display is really, really good on this. The colors are also very vibrant, as I said earlier. And this video is actually going pretty well. I thought it may have been a little bit laggy, but no, it's actually quite good. And also, if we do bump the speakers up... That's the dual stereo speakers and they are quite beefy. Honestly, the YouTube test has gone quite well, and this is in the browser as well, and I thought there may have been a little bit of lag, but no, there's not. Can we zoom to fill? No, we cannot. But no, it looks all good. The stereo speakers are sounding good, but at this point, I think we should actually go into the speaker test. Let's try BFG Division and see how loud this phone gets. Now, I've got the MP3 version of it, as well as the FLAC version of it, or FLAC. I'm gonna try FLAC, FLAC, same thing, and uh, we'll see if it plays. It should do. It does. Beautiful. Now that definitely packs quite a punch. I think we got to 101.9 with the top speaker sounding the loudest. The bottom speaker is a little bit muffled, but honestly, when you've got it sort of like this, I don't really hear an imbalance. They're both sort of blending together and that stereo speaker experience is definitely kicking in. That is quite impressive to see on this. The speakers actually performed quite well. When I get to the teardown, I'll have a look at these speakers and see how big they are, but I don't think this would be that big, but maybe they've put big speakers in here. I'm not too sure, but anyways, but I will try these welcome earphones in this and see if it does play. No. Oh, there we go. It's detected now. Yep. It's playing them through the tin cans. Oh God, it sounds terrible. The earphones are terrible. I'm sure if you actually connected proper earphones up to it, there'd be no problems at all. Speaker test. All good. YouTube test. All good. But what about gaming on this phone? How do you think gaming's actually going to go on this? Well, I've got Crazy Taxi and GTA San Andreas on here. And unfortunately, Crazy Taxi can't open. I downloaded the APK file as well as the data off APK Pure, so that could have been a problem on my part. Uh, San Andreas should work though. There we go. San Andreas on this. How's it gonna go? It's a very weird aspect ratio, much like the uh, Marrows 2019 phone that I recently reviewed, which if you wanna have a look at that video, that's up there to watch. That phone was uh, uh, overpriced. But anyways, uh, let's do traffic heavy, that's all good. Uh, display, we'll put everything up to maximum, the resolution up, draw distance, the shadows advanced, car reflections, detailed, all that good stuff. And unfortunately we've got to bump the radio down because of copyright. Here we go, San Andreas. Oh, that song never gets old, man. Ooh. We. All right. Hey, that's pretty smooth, actually. Get on the bike. No, I don't want to. No, I'm not taking a taxi this time. I don't want a taxi. I do not. Okay, that'll do. That'll do. I'll take that. We uh, buttons. Oh, hello. Whoa. Nice! Mad jump. Here we go. Oh, damn it. Haptic vibration actually does work. Uh, but no, San Andreas actually runs really well on this. I was expecting it to be pretty laggy, but it's actually better than the Marrows 2019 that I recently tested. And the speaker is really, really loud. 
But if you wanted to use this as a dedicated San Andreas phone with a controller, I mean, feel free, you could do that, but hey, I'm actually quite surprised at this. Boop. Didn't flip it. Nice. Everything's looking pretty good for this phone so far, so let's go ahead and check the specifications just to double check everything. It is the Duo Quinn Quinn 2, but it's the Xiaomi Quinn 2. It's made by Xiaomi somewhere along the lines, but anyways. RAM is 1GB, as we all know. The system on chip is the Unisoc, or is it UniSoc? SE9832E, which is made by Spreadstrom, and that is a quad-core with a Mali T820 GPU. Android Pie on this, which is all good. The 576 x 1440 display, with a 22.5 by 9 aspect ratio, 60Hz refresh rate, memory 1 gigabyte with 32 gigs of internal storage, the camera being 5 megapixels, battery 2100 milliamp hours, sensors, we do have the accelerometer, light and proximity sensor, and in device info hardware we can do the multi-touch test, which, what would this be, maybe 5 point? What? I'm sorry, but what? 10 point multi-touch display, that is excellent. I will try the last application just to make sure everything's all good and I'm fairly sure it would be. System on chip, quad core, memory, RAM being one gig. The screen size says 5.2 inches, but it's about 5.05 inches, but that's close enough. Battery, uh, whoa, okay, well, that's a bit much there. It's being a bit generous to us, but now we know it's 2100 milliamp hours. Sensors, we have a step counter also installed in this. So there you go. And cameras, 5 megapixel, and that is it. And that's pretty much everything I need to cover on this phone. I've went through most of the applications. Most of them are Chinese, and you probably could remove the default applications via ADB, but you are only limited to six applications on this phone, which is a bit of a downside. But look, doing a gaming test, speaker test, internet test and everything, this thing is actually quite snappy for what it is. But I think for the global version of this, anything past 100 US dollars is probably a bit much because you don't have a front camera, you don't have expandable storage. There are a lot of things Things missing on this phone, but it's meant as a secondary phone to your main phone as like an assistant for remote controls or just to quickly check the internet or something like that. As I said, there's nothing stopping you from actually using this as its own dedicated device if you don't want to use a six inch plus screen phone. You are just very limited to what you can do with this, but if you can find this cheap, I'd actually highly recommend it. The pro version is more pricier. And if you do find this, you want to make sure it's the global version. So then you've got the Google Play services. But some people have actually said that the China version is faster than the global version with Google Play services. So I've got no idea. There's a big forum on XDA about people talking about this phone. There's also a forum on 4PDA, which is a Russian forum with people discussing how they've managed to do some mad hacks on this to get it converted from global to Chinese and vice versa. So. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this if you're into that. If you just want a basic phone, here it all is here. Fairly basic. Unfortunately, it's out of stock at the $65 mark that I paid for it. But look around. If you can find it cheap, might be something to consider. As I'm quite happy with the performance of this phone. It honestly has taken me by surprise at how well this has performed. The dual stereo speakers are definitely a highlight with this. You just wouldn't think this would be implemented in a budget phone, but... It is, and it's honestly great to see. But anyways, that was a bit of a rambly conclusion, but I think you all get the idea of what's going on with this Xiaomi Quinn 2. I mean, it is Xiaomi, so I don't know why I set my expectations so low. I'm gonna power this down, we'll tear this down, see what the motherboard looks like and the battery and all that sort of thing, give this another quick conclusion, and call this a video. Now the question is how we take this thing apart. I have a feeling the back casing will just pop off. Oh no, it's fine, we got it. There we go. It is just that easy. Just pop the back off. So we've got the speaker actually built into the back of the case, which is just lightly adhered on. So that's the speaker just there, the bottom loudspeaker. We've also just got some contacts and we've got some more antennas around the top. Now we can get a good look at these speakers and there is our secondary speaker. And it's the same size as the bottom speaker, which is why this phone performed very well in the audio department. I've got a bit of tape just over these connectors and I can disconnect the battery. And the battery is just gently adhered in place with a bit of adhesive. And that is it there, our 2100 milliamp hour battery, which just has the Quinn logo just there. Nothing really special going on with this battery. The bottom PCB just has a little flex connector connecting it to the motherboard. And we do have our coin style vibration motor type C port, as well as the microphone just there. But that is a little tiny charging board. It is quite cute. We've got a signal wire that I've just disconnected. And on the side, we've got the buttons. So we've got the volume buttons as well as the dual power button. So we've got one that acts as the AI assistant and the other one that acts as just the normal power button, like so. 
So you press and hold the top for power and the bottom is for the assistant. The whole top portion can actually just lift straight off like so. And that contains the earpiece as well as the glass for the camera. And speaking of the camera, here it is. The lone five megapixel camera in this phone is just this one here. It does not have any optical image stabilization or any electronic image stabilization. It is just a fairly basic one. As for the LED on the motherboard, it is only just one. I thought it may have been two because it was fairly bright, but no, it's only just the one. There's one screw holding down the motherboard and this then just pops off and that's it. We do have the front sensor and notification LED on this little flex ribbon just there. There's no heat pipes or any thermal paste or anything like that. It just uses the frame of the phone for cooling, but the board itself just has the SIM tray there, a little sticker. If anyone wants to have a look at that sticker, if there's any information on there, I don't think there is. And that's pretty much it. It's fairly basic. For a budget phone like this, I gotta say it's actually built fairly well and it even has Quinn 2 printed on the frame as well. Well, that was a relatively short teardown. I really didn't have to do much because it was very easy to open and get into, but I don't think there's much else that I want to take a look at. So I'll go ahead and put this thing back together and we'll see if it still works. Yep. All still good. Beautiful. I honestly prefer to keep it with the case off because I like the whole red and black color scheme. That is the Xiaomi Quinn 2, all still working. And with everything that I've got installed, I can play around with this. I actually might take the system apps off because I don't need them now. And I could just play San Andreas on this tiny little phone if I wanted to. I mean, just as a comparison with that Malrose phone, it's a bit bigger, but it's definitely more powerful and has better features than this thing. But anyways, everyone, that's taking a look at the Xiaomi Quinn 2 AI Life, or the Xiaomi Quinn 2. As I said, if you can find this for under $100, US for the global version, I think it's worth it as a budget, compact little phone. But anything else past that, it may not be worth it. And if you can get one for the same price that I got it for, it is definitely a bargain. And it far exceeded my expectations in terms of performance and usability. Even though we are limited with some functions, I managed to get around it. And I can definitely say I do love this little Xiaomi Quinn 2. As I said, if you can find one cheap enough, it might be something to play around with. Thank you so much for watching this video and coming along this long journey of having a look at the Xiaomi Quinn 2. I really do appreciate it. And I will leave a link to the one that I purchased on eBay just for reference if you want to go check that out. But yeah, it was $65 Australian, so... I think I got a pretty good dealio out of that one. But if you have a Xiaomi Quinn 2, feel free to let me know down in the comments if you've got a global version or the Chinese version, and if you've somehow managed to put Google Play services on it or done something to it, feel free to let me know, because it's always interesting to hear back from people who do own the phones I review. So I'd definitely be interested from hearing from you folks if you do own one. Timestamps are in the description as per usual, or if you managed to make the whole way through, I thank you very much for that. But I am working on a bunch of projects. For example, this tiny little thing, I am working on that welcome phone, that uh, X10 ripoff, and I'm also planning to restore a Gizmondo. That will be really fun to share with you all. But as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which will be one of those random phone things. Maybe this, because this is going to be really interesting to test. But I'll see you in the next one. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.